Welkom iedereen bij mijn let's play van 999. In dit deel gaan we de lift naar beneden. Volgende deel was er een lift. Meer dan elkaar ga ik even niet maken. June looked worried. Her eyes turning back and forth as if she was trying to make a decision when suddenly. Waarom? Mijn probleem is hier, nou weer niemand die de deur opent. At the last possible moment, June dashed towards turning sideways just in time to slip through the gap between the coasting doors. Jammer dat haar dingen er niet tussen kwamen, haar vingers. Ik ben gemeen, ik weet het. June picked Jim's fingers against the open bottom, but it was too late. The door had shut, he and June were in the elevator and was headed down to E-deck. He was so surprised that he didn't even have time to think about what awaited him on the E-deck. The elevator stopped and the door slid open. The step of the floor outside the elevator. Nothing's been especially unusual. No fish coming by the fish. <laughs> yeah, bullshit. Dat is gewoon flauw om te zeggen. June looked around nervously then. Exhaled. I know. Jupiter glanced around the room and found themselves in. The first thing there was a set of thick iron bars. To run the length of the room, separating the left elevator from the right one. That might be more luck. Then perhaps. In the corner of the house, the elevator, Jimbe found an opening. He took it, stuck his head around the corner. A long hallway stretched out in front of him. Yeah, number six. We're going in, want our combination is not six. En zo sneaky wij zitten, is onze combinatie nog steeds niet zes. Junior just have to turn the run and jog. Before they found themselves in front of the door. And there was number written in bright red paint. Ik ben fucking slecht ziend en ik kon nog lezen. And there was red bolt to the wall right next to the door. I've got another type of people there wasn't much they could do with it. Jimpe and June head back to the sea deck. They head back to the map on the wall. As it turned out, it was a burnt. Warm burnt. Hmm. Ach ja. So now let's explain what they had found. There was another number door needed, just like the one on E. Deck beyond the door that had earth key opened. According to send the loads, there was a one and door. Okay, let's have a look. We have a six. Om daar in te gaan. Santa's eight and three is twelve. Eight. Om naar binnen te gaan, 8, 8 plus 5 is 13 en is 14. 8 plus 6 is 16. Uh. 3 plus 8 is 11, plus 5 is 16, plus 6 is 22, is 4. 3 plus 5 plus 6 is 11, is 14. We komen niet in zin. Dat is wat kwijt van mijn overlast en vat. Ja. Ja. Klopt. Beetje kloten. Veel te veel. Ja. Hij vatte met Moko quiet for a moment. June bit her lip while Love decided off softly to herself and Santa cracked a stiff neck and stared off into the distance at nothing. Ze hebben niks weten te doen, ofwel. Maar de combinatie die we nu hebben is 8. Ik herhaal weer 8, 3 is 11, is 22. We kunnen alleen maar deur nummer 4 openen. Je mag nog. Zijn we een keer door deur nummer 4 gegaan? Um, I don't think it's very good that they to say here. June looked up at Jimpy with large bleeding eyes. Yeah, you're right. Ace and team might be back already. Door nummer 1, 8, 6 is 14. Oh ja. Ah. Te niet het. Back to the large room they went. Deze animatie krijg ik nooit genoeg van. Dit is fucking nice. The moment they stopped inside, a tremendous voice echoed across the room. It was seven. Ace was right behind and Clover was behind Ace. Although she seemed to be hanging back. 
so there was something strange about them. Sam had the look of a man who had seen a toast. It was Isabel, and Clover looked as though she was only moments from passing out entirely. For a long moment, they simply stood there looking at one another. Jimpy looked around nervously, waiting for someone else to speak. No one did. He looked at Seven. <laughs> Seven was trying on very hard to be angry, but something had shaken him in heart. His shoulders were trembling and his voice was strained. Seven couldn't finish. He just looked away, his face twisted by. Jim B. wasn't sure what. Instead, A spoke. He took a deep breath, closed his eyes, and spoke. <laughs> oh, Ava dood. Jammer. Ow! It was if old air had suddenly been sucked out of the room. Jim B. felt his heart being quickened, and he really lost was having trouble breathing. He could feel a cold sweat beating on his forehead and neck. Jim B. and June sent and Lotus looked the way he felt all three were frozen in place. The face is white. Oh my god, that's not true, is it? We should make sure. Yeah, right, we should. They don't want to head to the door number three. They stopped short and turned to look at seven. He was pointing at the door with no number. The new destination clear, Jimpe and his companions headed for the door with no number. Ooh, spooky. Once in the hallway, there was easy spot a metal door on the left wall. It had been open when they had been through before, but now just as Seven said, there was a broom stuck between the door and the frame keeping it open. They looked at it for a moment and stepped inside. Lotus wrinkled her nose and covered her mouth in disgust. Even sent a pinched pinch his nose shut. It was just as bad as they had said, perhaps worse. A hideous smell filled the air so thick they could almost taste it. It was sour and smelled of fish, feces and burned meat. It works his way through Jimby's nose and down his throat to pound against the entrance to his stomach. He put his hands over his mouth and struggled to keep what little was in his stomach where it belonged. Mmm. I got lettuce. L, L, R. Okay. They didn't have to wonder where the body was. There was blood everywhere. A few arms of the splatter reaching toward them as they walked in through the door. All one had to do was follow the many radio arms to the source. The body itself was hidden behind a diver. He didn't give a chance to say no. He put his hands on his shoulder as if to shove her into the ground like a tent pole, turned and walked toward the end of the divider. It felt like it took an eternity for him to get there. Sand and Lotus followed, timid and nervous as a pair of children. Eventually, they reached the divider. Turned one another and snowed slowly. Jimpy put his hands on the fire and peered around the corner. For a moment, he forgot to breathe. He felt his heart collapse in his chest like an empty cigarette carton and time froze. He knew in that instant he would take the image before him to the grave. Ik zie niet eens wat. Flau, jongens, flau. What was left of the body set in a sea of blood? Chunks of flesh torn from the body set in the blood like tiny islands in a great red sea. A vast ragged hole had been torn in the torso and rot remained of his intestines spilled out of it like fresh spaghetti. Smart chunks of meat had spread against the wall and became stuck here as they dry. Globules of yellowish fat had left trails like tiny slug as gravity put them down the wall, even as they'd right to it. Santa's voice was strained. Jimpy suspected he was holding down some vomit of his own. Yeah, it looked as though the explosion had been quite powerful. His legs were both bent in an odd and unnatural way, and his left arm had split open, explo exposing the painful white bone of his ulna. His bracelet lay next to him. It seemed to have to it well enough, enough to have shattered the display, which lay on the ground in pieces. Half of his head had simply collapsed. Okay, now when it was the play that in beeld van zijn. Want it was simple. Ik kan hier heel makkelijk tegen. Ik weet alleen niet van andere mensen. The blood coating almost made it look like raw pizza dough covered in tomato sauce. His clothes too were covered in blood. The burnished tie, the white shirt, the jacket with the yellow piping, and the grey slacks. 
they were all familiar to Jinpei. Lotus' voice was unnaturally deep and strained, and Jinpei heard it catch in her throat. Now we enjoy you. That's not The squeal of torch and metal made Jinpei's teeth curl. How can you tin them? Nah, ma. It's not like the noise a ghost would make. No matter how many times you heard, he never got used to it. Every time, it put him on edge. It didn't help there was a girl nearby who looked far more like a ghost than a living human should. Clover. It was Clover. She sat on the edge of the bed, her head drooping listlessly onto her chest. Her eyes were blank and stared across the room at nothing. Her breathing was slow and mechanical. Aside from the rise and fall of her chest, she didn't move. Jimbe felt as even a nudge might cause her to shatter into a thousand pieces. What's going on? Seven lowered his voice like in an effort to keep Clover from hearing what he had to say. There were four other people in the room with Jimpe and Seven. Ace, Santa, June and Lotus. Seven looked at each one of them in turn and continued. Jimmy Cross on granted. Jim seems shocked. I was in one of us killed so casually. Ik mag Ace. Hij is fucking leuk. Ik, like, ik vind ook zijn design heel mooi. Maar hij is heel naïef. Jimbet would then really consider dead. If Shard killed Snake, then Zero was on the ship with them. Of course. Of course it was, it was obvious. She was somewhere on the ship, but you have no idea where. Ja, simpel, hij zou eigenlijk op het schip moeten zitten, want ik kan niet van... Op welke afstand dan ook, van een schip zijn en dan door de speakers praten van dat schip. Dat is niet mogelijk. Om de speakers te praten moet je in een netwerk zitten. In een netwerk, ik kan via hekken, kan je wel komen, maar geen idee hoe het precies moet. Jimmy moet zelf last in vat. Everyone went quiet. The silence was cold and clammy, and Jimpe could feel it crawling across his back and around his throat. Again, he heard the ghost thing moaning snooze. And one was learning a person who looked more ghost than human appeared. It was close. She looked at the floor as she spoke, and her voice was a cold monotone. Every human body in the room froze. The only sound was the muffled rustling of breath. I started from face to face. One of the faces was the face of the jailer. But who? Jinpei. Kijk, nu als ik zeg dat het is crazy, maar het is mogelijk. Ik zeg gewoon mogelijk. Waarom? Nou, hij kan een voice recorder hebben. Je had zijn left arm. Okay. Jim let the question hang in there and looked at the others. It was sent to enters. Yeah, Jim Pay not. Did 
Ja. Okay. No one spoke. The face for Korean, but Jimbo wasn't sure if to believe him or not. Finally, others spoke up. Jimpy Fogg, yeah, thought of that, and he had to be honest with himself. He had no idea. No sight. Well, so much for making a persuasive arc. <laughs> Fuck you! Jim was maybe aware of the eyes on him and their, their disapproval. He tried to find something else, anything else to look at. Better no longer. Fiki, yeah? Oh, in the morning. Yeah. Wat Roger want to say inside? Seven clones remain similarly silent. Okay, the deuren die hier nog over zijn, zijn 1 en 6. The eyes were looking at something somewhere else, very far away. Let's go. Oh, okay. Ace was, but the feet are moving. Tell me where they were going. The next destination was Mercury. A set bolt to warn near the stairs that led to the casino in the kitchen between two elevators. The Mercury card reader. Who would do the Mercury key card? Seven had given him the card. Oh! The Seven had card gevonden, mooi. Chip has set the card for the reader. The light on the reader turned, turned green and made a tiny electronic noise. Now they were ready. Mike, nee! Bedankt voor het kijken. Ik zie jullie de volgende keer weer. Doei!